I'm Alan Guskin, and I served in Thailand from, I was in the Peace Corps from October 1961 to April 1964. I was trained at the University of Michigan, and then um, went to Thailand January 1962, um, and then served about 20, 27 months in country. Uh, all of a sudden, I get a call from Ted Newcomb. He got a call from Nicholas Hobbs. This is about April, late, late April, who was the first director of selection of the Peace Corps, well-known psychologist. And, and Nicholas Hobbs had asked Ted Newcomb, are there any graduate students in social psychology and personality who could come to Washington to help us with the selection of Peace Corps volunteers for the first group to go into training? Hobbs knew nothing about my involvement in the Peace Corps movement. And Ted Newcomb, of course, knew a lot. And so Ted calls me up and said, Al, how would you like to go to Washington and work in Peace Corps headquarters? And it was kind of interesting, because I had, in, in that month of April, I had a bit, I pulled away from the Peace Corps group. I actually resigned my, my chairmanship of the group because of the Bay of Pigs. I, I, I felt, and I wrote, I wrote something, that it was, that was a sort of a, they followed us around, the, the Michigan Daily had a reporter that was just covering Judy and me, so any, everything we did. And so when I, um, when, when I said I was resigning, it was a big story in, in, the, um, in the Daily, I think it was even front page or something like that. And I, and I just couldn't, I couldn't accept that, how do you, how do you, have a Peace Corps and have the Bay of Pigs. Now, I later resolved it because that's the contradictions of all government. I mean, any good government program, there are a bunch of contradictions. And, uh, but at that point I was discouraged. And so, but what happened is that when I got the call from Ted Newcomb, I, I got excited again about the Peace Corps. And there I was working in Washington. I really got really into it again. So, and then I, you know, I began to accept that governments are governments. Politicians are politicians. Life is not easy and straight line, and there are very a lot of complications along the way. And so we worked in Peace Corps headquarters. What happened is I went to Washington, Judy came with me. It was kind of a cute story. And, and I went, went in to see Nick, Nick Hobbs, who, say hello and you know sign all papers and he, he said to Judy what do you do in the summer <laughs> she's a getting a master's degree in comparative literature right and um, she said well I just no I'm not sure what I'm gonna do she said why don't you come work <laughs> so they hired both of us and so it was a it was a glorious summer working very very hard and we, then we decided to join we just got excited about Thailand was a great project a great great place and uh, we knew that Bob Texter, who was a consultant to the Peace Corps and a expert on Thai, uh, on Thailand, Thai culture, had been a monk for six months in Thailand, and he um, he he was a, the main co uh, consultant on choosing the university that would do the Peace Corps training for Thailand One, and he chose the University of Michigan because it was language development program in Thai, and so he 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 we we got to know him real well because we, uh, Judy was, uh, actually I was ahead of selection for the East and West Pakistan, East Pakistan now being Bangladesh, and, uh, and Judy was for Thailand, but we all helped each other. This, we had like, I don't know, 10 or 12 people um, choosing, selecting people to go into the training programs. And so we all helped each other, so I worked closely with Judy on Thailand, and we got to know Bob Texer real well. And he kept pounding on us, why don't you go to Thailand? Why don't you join the Peace Corps? So we did. Not an easy decision in some ways because I had a, a prize teaching fellowship. I, I was a teaching fellow in my second year, then the third year was the year of the Peace Corps stuff, and this was the fourth year when I was going to take my doctoral prelims, and Ted Newcomb, my mentor, had asked me to be his teaching fellow, which was the prize of the teaching fellow. And I made the decision to join the Peace Corps. So I had to go back to Ann Arbor. And uh, at the end of the summer, and we had to put our things, we, we had to deal with 
uh, getting getting our stuff moved out of our apartment and all this kind of stuff because we were going to go in in October. And I went back to I said, Ted, can you let me out of this responsibility? And um, I remember he was at his house and said, let's have a glass of wine together. And we said, drank a glass of wine and we talked. And I mean, I knew you could get 10 graduate students in social psych to, to be teaching fellows for Ted Newcomb. Um, and um, so he said, he said to me at the end of the after making, sort of, sort of talking about it and so on, and I'm getting a little anxious, oh my God. He said, of course, of course. He said, what you're doing is great. And then other, and Dan Katz said, you'll learn more in the Peace Corps in two years than you learn in this department in 10 years. So, you know, so I, was, I, got, a lot, I got a lot of support from the right people. After the, the uh, time in Washington and and we selected her, there's a story that's, I haven't told very often, probably shouldn't even tell now, but doesn't make a difference. Um, we selected ourselves. I mean, we never took any tests. We never did any, <laughs> we never did any of that stuff. And, uh, and somebody said years later that they couldn't find a record of our application. Or so. so they you know, said so they had all of the, the archives were in some mountain somewhere. And they, there was no record that, other than just the application of, of uh, for Judy and me in terms of the, the folder. We, we, what, we, how come there's nothing in there? <laughs> we, we had selected ourselves into the Peace Corps. Kind of cute. Those days they had a thing called Peace Corps leaders in, in the early groups. and. Um, and they, uh, I, I was supposed to be a Peace Corps leader. I don't remember that. Tell me about Peace Corps. Yeah, leader. just uh, it was a, among the volunteers. It's like a captain of a baseball team, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what in God's name I was going to do, but you're going to be somehow, maybe be the link between the volunteers and bad idea, <laughs> bad idea. I think so. Uh, oh yeah. Well, it, it never came to pass. I mean, by the time of training, it was very clear to everybody, especially me that this was not something you wanted to do. I mean, this was a, I mean, th 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 that was a, di a disaster waiting to happen to, to, to represent your fellow volunteers uh, with anybody. Uh, so anyway, that, that never came to pass, but, um, but that was all part, I think, of our selecting ourselves. And, and people in, in Washington knew the story of Michigan and Kennedy. Harris Wofford was there, and they, they all knew that story. So I, so Judy and I were kind of special people in, in Washington because of that. But we went into training October, I think it was October 9th, at the University of Michigan. And we lived in the Michigan Union. And uh, we were the only married couple uh, in, in, the, um, in that group. Uh, I don't know about other groups. And then at the end of training, How big uh, was your group about? 45. Yeah, that went over, 45 went over, about 50 to start with. Where did most of them live? I don't imagine they lived in the Michigan Union. Oh, almost the every, Chinese. I think almost everybody lived in the, I thought, I'm not, I'm not sure of the answer to that. Oh, but there was enough rooms in the Michigan Union? Oh, there's a lot of rooms in the oh, Michigan Union. Yeah, the third and fourth floors. Uh, okay. Yeah, we, we, I'm almost sure we, we all lived there. Okay. And a lot of our training was there and other, some other camp parts on camp, place on campus. And I was, I was, um, part of the university group. There were, I think there were four groups within the Peace Corps Thailand One training. One was the university people. Another was the uh, English language teachers. The third were the medical technologists. And the fourth were the vocational tech, uh, tech people. And, um, and so we, we then, I don't know what, I, I know Judy went through the English language institute. Big, it was a, a uh, very elaborate applied linguistics program here on the ca campus. I don't know what they did with us, the nine, nine of us that were to be university people. And there's myself, and then there was, there was another person who was a university person and then at the same university as I was. Um, and then uh, there was a Buddhist university, the political university, and the education university. All of us um, were together. Now, did was all your training here? Did did you go to Puerto Rico also? No, no, no. We never went to that. <laughs> no, the people have asked me that's the outward bound training program. No, thank the Lord we didn't have to go through that. 
I don't know why, because some of the other groups did, but we never, we never did. They, they, I think it was mainly because we were all teachers, and you know, what, what were we going to do? Sort of repel from mountains? Are you a teacher at a university, or a teacher training college, or whatever? So they, they never. They never put us through that, thank the Lord. I, I, that would have been quite a trip. We did learn certain kind of safety things in terms of uh, learning how to protect ourselves. We were, you know, we're in water and to, to be able to float and all this kind of stuff. But no, we didn't do, we, we, you know, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't go outside of Michigan. We spent all 12 or 13 weeks here.